Hi, Steve Sanangelo here from the SRS Rock Report with a new update I think you're going to find interesting. This is what I want to talk about. How much total energy does it take to mine gold? Total energy in all forms and stages. Now, this is important because due to the complex nature of our economy, people do not understand the total embedded energy in, in how, what it takes to mine gold and as well as other aspects of the economy. So I want to start right here. This comes from Newmont. Newmont is the largest gold miner in the world. They put out this in their second quarter update. Their direct operating cost by category. And what we see Labor is 50%, half of its contracted services, half of its Newmont employees, then 30% are materials and consumables. Energy, fuel and energy is only 15%. And what do you see? Electric power is four. Diesel is, is 7%, it's almost double the electric power. A lot of energy to um, run those haul trucks to move the ore. So looking at this, we only see 50% energy. That's it, 15%. So it's not the main driver of the gold price, but I'm going to clarify that. Let's first look a close-up of this. This is Newmont's uh, full year, 2024. Basically, their direct mining costs, th this is what they go by, is about $9 billion. But they also have $2.5 billion of depreciation and amortization. That's a real cost because the mines are depleting. Uh, equipment, the equipment, the mining equipment is being worn down. It has to be maintained, replaced. And, and so this is being offset by capital expenditures that happen every quarter. Then there's 1.6 billion of additional costs. We see reclamation and remediation, exploration, advanced projects, and even general and administrative costs. Then there's the interest expense. So all costs really are 13.2 billion. But what I want to focus on is this chart right here. If we look at Newmont's direct cost only, 50% um, of the labor cost is about 4.5 billion. Now this is in millions, so it's 4,500 million, four and a half billion for labor cost, 2.7 billion for material cost, and only 1.8 billion for energy. So again, looking at this, we only see energy represents 15% of what it takes to mine gold. But let's break that down further. New months direct mining costs the human, the labor is actually human energy. It's a form of energy. Now we have to realize the employees and contractors, basically they're steering or controlling machines that do 100 to 200 times the work of, a, of human labor. So basically this human labor that gets paid very well is steering and controlling uh, machines run by fossil fuels. And so this is important, but again, it's still a form of energy. It's human energy. Then the materials are nothing but the result of labor, human energy, capital, and raw energy. So to make the different materials and, and consumables that Newmont uses every quarter, every year, look at the capital, the, the haul trucks. Wait till you see the energy that goes into making haul trucks. And so we need to understand, even though it's listed as materials and consumables, it's these are a result of human energy, energy and capital to make these materials and consumables. Then we've got the energy, which is oil and electricity. So looking at this, just to give you an idea how much Newman is consuming in materials in 2024, the, the grinding media on the left, 103,000 plus metric tons of grinding uh, media, almost 40,000 tons of cyanide. 374,000 tons of lime, 100,000 tons of cement, and 12,400 tons of tires. You have to think about the complex supply chain that extracts the materials, transport those materials, then the labor it takes to make these materials, and the energy it takes to make these materials, consumables, and then to transport them to the mine. So basically, it's energy in all forms and stages. But people, they just see it's 30% materials and consumables. But really, it's a, it's a result of labor, human labor, which is human energy, as well as uh, the capital in what it costs to make the, the uh, companies that make these materials. And then, of course, the energy to run them. Now, 
I've talked about the Caterpillar 797F. It's one of the largest. It hauls 400 tons. Uh, an amazing piece of equipment uh, that actually a lot are used in the Alberta tar sands to move the oil sludge to make oil sands oil. But this is what's interesting. Uh, a brand new Caterpillar 97. Uh, 797F used to cost five million, but now it's it's upwards of six million due to cost of capital going up, and we could see the uh, Kamitsu and these different uh, different haul trucks. We could see that they're ranging in the same price, uh, but this is only the cost of a brand new Caterpillar we uh, 797F haul truck. Uh, look at the parts that go into it. There are 20 to 30,000 individual parts, frame and structures. Engine has four to 6,000 parts. The powertrain has three to 4,000 parts. So we must consider the massive global supply chain that extracts the metals, that provides the parts for Caterpillar 797F. Because basically, Caterpillar only assembles a lot of they, they don't manufacture a lot of the parts. They've got a lot of suppliers all over the world that makes these parts and then ships them to Caterpillar and they assemble them, mostly in a lot of it in the United States. But this would, is what we need to understand. Once a company buys a Caterpillar 797F for about five, six million, the estimated annual maintenance cost is between 800 and 1.5 million. Now, this does not include the fuel. We could see the routine parts and consumables, uh, filters, oils, fluids. It's two hundred to four hundred thousand. Labor and diagnostics, three hundred to five hundred thousand. Brakes, suspension, minor repairs, two hundred to four hundred thousand, and other. So just to maintain this thing is about a million dollars plus a year. That's twenty percent of the cost. Now I've heard that the Caterpillar 797, if it's maintained, it can last 15 to 20 years. Let's say 15 years. They purchased it for five million. Let's say they've got to spend another 15 million over the life of that Caterpillar haul truck. That's a 20 million investment just to maintain and run, not including the fuel. So it's all the energy that it takes to do all this. That it embedded energy in all forms and stages to provide the maintenance to run the Caterpillar 797. Now, let's look at a close-up of this. Uh, basically, Caterpillar, to assemble and run their company, they use 19.1 million gigajoules of energy to assemble, uh, manufacture their, their equipment. Uh, construction equipment, mining equipment. They, they also do a lot of Caterpillar equipment for the energy uh, industry, uh, especially oil sands, they use a lot. There's, I think, 1,100 um, haul trucks, large haul trucks in Alberta. So these need to be maintained and replaced. But uh, let's compare that to the energy, direct and indirect energy consumed by Newmont. If you look at the bottom right, it's 57.5 million gigajoules. So Newmont is consuming three times the amount of energy that uh, Caterpillar is to, to assemble their, um, their equipment. But we have to remember, a lot of that embedded energy goes into the extracting of the steel and the, the metals in the components and the rubber, all the, the iron, the fittings, the, the, the bolts, the screws, all the different things that go into making a 797F haul truck are all done down the supply chain. And that's all energy in all forms and stages. And so I want to show you basically how much estimated waste rock that is generated a year. Now, the Boddington mine is a newer mine in Australia. There are, I heard, or I found out, there are 36 autonomous haul trucks there. And they it's a capacity of about 250 tons. So they had about almost 28 million tons of raced rock that had to be brought to the surface, had to be transported. That is 111,700 total haul truck trips a year. That's 320 truck trips per day. And you've got to divide that by the 36 haul trucks. So this goes to show you how much energy is being consumed in, 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 in running 
the haul trucks. Now, the total Newmont mines, 1.1 million haul truck trips. That's th almost over 3,000 truck trips per day. So we can see how much the reason why these trucks there, they work like 24 hours a day. The maintenance is unbelievable. Again, that's energy in all forms and stages to pro 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 provide the parts, consumables, the labor to fix those, and the energy cost to do to use the equipment to repair the maintenance on these equipment. Now, this is one of the last charts. This is fascinating. Let's take a close-up of this. This is the energy and X-energy assessment of heavy-duty mining trucks. What's fascinating, 98% of the diesel energy going into the diesel truck, we have to consider the one, almost 2% that is the air in the combination to produce the, uh, the spark that has the power. But only 32.6% of that power is, is real work. 36% is exhaust and 23% is heat lost. Now, uh, the water to heat the water and the oil is 6% and 1%, but again, only a third of the power of the diesel is being used as useful work to run the haul truck. So they're trying to figure out how to make become more efficient and electric motors tend to be more efficient. But this is a very fascinating thing on the embedded energy that it takes. And this is the most important chart. I don't think people realize, even though energy is only 15% of the cost at the mine for Newmont, when we look at the entire global supply chain, when we look at the, the human energy, when we look at the materials and consumables, most of the cost to produce gold is energy, human energy in all forms and stages and raw energy. So I hope you found this information interesting. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. Thank you.